Hey everyone, Cranberry Alarm, RI3D here. Um, today we got a little bit of a scoring demo for you guys. We ended up getting our end effector on with both of our scoring mechanisms um, with our elevator onto our chassis. So um, we can just move the robot by hand and kind of show off some of the uh, scoring opportunities we have with both the processor, the reef, um, and all of the scoring opportunities there. Um, let's take a look. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Go ad-free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the Join button below to get started. So to get us started, um, I'll give a little bit of a background on the end effector and kind of the thought process behind this. We are missing still uh, a second part of the robot, which is going to be our hopper, which is going to be our intake. Um, but I guess to state a little bit more on the end effector, that the end effector right here will accept the coral from the hopper. Um, and from there, we can kind of show you that this is all one unit. So this, our algae mechanism right here that dealgifies the reef and also can score in the processor um, is entirely connected to our elevator. And this can move entirely up and down as, as needed, as long as the uh, coral's not in the way. So with that said, um, well, let's go ahead and take a look over at the reef and see how the uh, elevator looks right there. Yeah, so diving into some of the, the positions we have, um, this is our starting default position. We rest here, the elevator's all the way down. Our robot's sitting at 42 inches tall. Um, the hopper's gonna feed directly into this position. And then we found that um, at this height, if you're spinning one, of, one set of wheels on uh, like the left faster than the right, it sort of pitches the coral and turns it into the, the trough there. Um, we've shown a lot of testing with that and we found it to be very consistent, but this is, this is a nice starting configuration for us to have um, and it keeps our center of mass low to the ground. Starting to move up, going to sort of center the robot so you can see a little bit better. We are going to hang the coral out of our robot a good two inches. And so we think that this is going to be advantageous because it lets the driver see um, firsthand like exactly where the coral is going to go. The further away you are, the more guesswork there is, where the coral's pointing, how that's gonna work from, well, the driver's station isn't super close to this um, tiny scoring element. So here we're at L4, and our elevator right now is a good two inches below max height, so just push it all the way up, Reese. And we have way more than enough height on this elevator. We've already talked a little bit about our um, manufacturing goof, giving us an extra inch of um, extension, but as you can see, um, a max height robot, 42 inches, standard two-stage elevator, no real modifications, reaching L4, um, if you're careful about where you store your game piece, uh, is no problem. Yeah, and th there are currently our, our height from the carpet right now is sitting at 42 and 3 8 so we're 3 8 over starting config, um, but seeing how much extra room we had, we dropped that in half an inch, we know we'd be inside, and due to our time limitation, we decided to focus our efforts um, on something else, um, but we knew that if we were uh, a real team uh, inside build season, we'd be able to make that change. Um, so yeah, so now let's go ahead and move over to algae and see how that looks. So I'll go ahead and reposition the robot to be centered. There we go. So when we go to score, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive the elevator up, and that will allow us to then turn this out right here to then be able to pop the algae out and then we would then be able to grab it like this, drive away, and then potentially rotate in if we wanted or just keep holding it here. Um, we will then be driving around the field with it like this, so we will be prone to being hit by um, defenders, um, but this will at least allow us to go then straight over to the processor, which we'll go and highlight um, later, but we'll kind of show a little bit more geometry that we have with the uh, dealgifier. So if we go and put that back in, we can kind of see that we have a really nice, uh, we can just turn this uh, wrist up like this, which allows us to just drive into it like this, and then we can drive the rollers backwards to then pop this out. 
And that may come into our elevator, but then that will at least allow us to then you know, drive away in some fashion to then just de-score it like that if we need something quick. With how the, um, the yeah, reef gotcha. pegs are located L4 in this upper algae, um, if you're able to reach L4 and your algae mechanism is sitting below your coral me mechanism, it's gonna be very easy for you to reach uh, this upper algae uh, without needing more extension from the elevator. Um. So yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look now. Um, that kind of shows uh, how we get it from the reef and let's go and show kind of our geometry over here with the uh, processor. So looking over here at the processor, um, we'll go ahead and put the algae in the orientation of the robot like it comes uh, straight out of from our de-algifying um, in our basic uh, orientation. So we go and intake a little bit. We can't really hold it, do it too representatively, but we can at least show it a little bit. Um, and then we'll, from there we'll drive in, and then we would outtake and then score that. Um, in another configuration, if there's um, algae on the ground, what we can do is we can actually actuate out to here, which will then allow us to use this like a normal ground intake to then pull the game piece up and in to this point here. And then we can drive around and drive into the processor. We can either drive, I don't know how far we can go in or what the ruling is on that, but we can at least be at this point here. And our, with a little bit of give in our arm, it can just roll right in just like that. And we can sew right back down. Um, so we kind of realized that this mechanism really does offer a lot of flexibility for handling all the algae. Um, it's not the perfect one for a ground intake considering how narrow it is but it does give us a lot of options and does handle the de-algifying really well. So we're really looking forward to that. Oh. Um, so with this end effector being so uh, versatile, it also has come with a large baggage of weight. This entire end effector right here weighs about uh, 22 pounds, which is definitely on the heavy side. Um, so one big question we've been getting a lot and one question we've really had is kind of how that impacts the center of gravity of the elevator of the entire robot when the elevator is all the way up. Um, so we're going to put together a little demo kind of showing uh, the tippiness of the robot. And there's still more to be added to this, more on the superstructure of the robot. Um, but yeah, let's go and do a quick demo. We're going to start off by just um, kicking the front end of the robot. And this is going to simulate the robot driving backwards really kick, uh, quickly. So that was a pretty hard kick. Um, we'll do a little bit of a gentler one, kind of show that. All right, and then we'll go and do one where we kind of uh, get the robot has some momentum, and then we go ahead and stop that momentum. To go a couple more times. Come on, Corey, put some all into it. So there was really, I did stop that one there, so there was a chance that that one could have gone. Um, but really, with this game, there's no real reason to be driving with your elevator all the way up. Um, I, I understand when you're coming here, maybe there's a little bit of a reason, but you should be driving at a relatively slow speed with the elevator up. Um, and the way we're kind of going to handle that is uh, just in the code when the elevator's up, slow down the robot and just only really raise the elevator when we're getting near the reef. Um, so we feel pretty good about the current center of gravity of the robot and how it um, kind of handles the real height. Um, and that about does it. Um, please be sure to check out more Cranberry Alarm RA3 videos on Fun Robotics Network. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.